In this video, we're going to be taking the high poly shield from a previous tutorial and bake the detail onto a low poly mesh inside a substance painter. If I toggle x-ray mode, you can see the high poly shield is also there and in the same world space as the low poly mesh. My low poly geo follows the shape of the shield ready for the bake. And this example is kind of extreme, but um, it'll get the point across. If I just bring up the UVs, note that only the low poly shield needs to be UV unwrapped, which shouldn't take long depending on the shape of your mesh. Like, this didn't take very long at all. Okay, cool. Let's export our low poly geo. Just select the mesh, go up to File, Export Selection, and then just save it somewhere where you can find it easily. Right, so there's a few things we can do to the high poly mesh to make our lives easier inside a substance painter. Let's just hide the low poly mesh. You can do so by pressing H on the keyboard. Cool, so firstly, we can assign shaders to different material groups, which can then be baked into an ID map inside a substance, which would be great for making masks. Our low poly mesh doesn't have like this part, for example, separated, which would make selecting what we want on materials to be a real pain. So this is just gonna make our lives easier. So I'm just gonna assign a simple surface shader. Right click, go down to assign new material, surface shader. You're going to want all the shaders to be distinctively different. So let's just make all the wood red and then just assign another shader. Okay, let's go ahead and make the metal green. Perfect, so you can sort of see the effect we're going for, high contrast colors for like easy selection, great for the masks. Notice how I've converted my smooth mesh preview into polygons. So if I just go ahead and create a quick cube, and just hit free. This is just a preview. Go into modify, convert, smooth mesh preview to polygons. Basically just takes the preview and smooths. It's the same as if you were to go poly smooth, so shift, right click, smooth, and then set in this to two, say. The reason we need to do this is because Substance Painter doesn't have a smooth preview, so doing this means we have the true high poly shape that we want and not the unsubdivided version. Cool, so now we can export the mesh. So file, export selection, and again, just save it somewhere where you can find it. Note that we need to save this as an FBX, so Substance can read the material color info. All right, awesome, Substance Painter time. Over in Substance Painter, we just need to import the low poly mesh. File, new, and then just search uh, for the low poly file wherever you saved it. I'm gonna be using the PBR template and I'm just gonna set the document resolution to 2K. All right, and then just click OK. Going over to the texture set settings, find this button and click bake mesh maps. I'm just gonna change the document size and I'm just gonna click this little file and load in the high poly mesh ready to use for the maps. Max front and rear distance will vary per model, but I can probably get away with just setting this to one for this example. Sometimes things don't bake into the low poly. If that's the case, just play around with these settings until you get it working. And then just one other thing we need to change is the ID settings. Change color source to material color, as that's why we assigned the different shaders. Oh, and just like a side note, if we didn't combine the asset into one mesh, we could have used Mesh ID, which would have allowed us to mask individual objects. Probably overkill for this example, but good to know nonetheless. Right, and then um, we're good just to click Bake. This shouldn't take too long, uh, but times will vary depending on the complexity of your asset. This isn't very complex, so it won't take long. If all goes well, you should have something like this. And this pretty much wraps up where I'm going to leave this tutorial, but I will quickly just go over using the Color ID as a mask. It's pretty simple, so let's just drag out a material. Uh, let's just choose this one. Right, so as you can see, um, it filled everything, all parts of the mesh. So what we can actually do is right click and add mask with color selection. You can right click anywhere out here in the viewport to bring up the menu and just simply click pick color. And then just select the metal. And we can just add some wood and do the same. Right click, 
pick color and just select the wood. And then we'll have this. Okay, that's really the basics. I do have a tutorial on how to text the high poly version of the shield, adding paint and blood and whatnot, so you can check that out if you're interested. Um, but this is how I'd approach this asset. And you can apply what you will learn in the other tutorial to this low poly mesh if you want to. Obviously, you could model more detail and thus make the ID map redundant, but it's a useful thing to know as it helps keep the poly count down and still retain control over the mask. Right, so I think with that, this video is over. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.